We turn now to Donald Trump. Between trying to watch an historic space launch in Florida to launching his own Twitter thread against the social media platform, U.S. President Donald Trump is staying in the news headlines. And a new book is putting the president under a microscope both for his pandemic response and for what his presidency is doing to the, to the political landscape. That book is called Trumpocalypse, and we welcome author David Frum back to your morning. Mr. Frum, great to see you again. Thank you so much for joining us. What a pleasure to be here with you again. So you went back and actually updated the beginning of this book to include the president's pandemic response. And we have a clip here from his press conference on March 13th. Let's take a listen. No, I don't take responsibility at all because we were given a, uh, a set of circumstances and we were given rules, regulations and specifications from a different time. Uh, was it meant for this kind of uh, an event? So, so, Mr. Frum, you say that those words are, quote, likely to be history's epitaph on his presidency. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that? How has his response to the pandemic impacted, say, his chances in November? Well, Donald Trump inherited a growing economy. Uh, he inherited every uh, aspect of American strength that he took credit for over the next two, three years. Um, the pandemic is not exactly his fault, but the response to the pandemic is his fault. Different countries have responded in different ways. The American response has been almost the worst on Earth, certainly the worst among the advanced countries. And that is due to his negligence. The project of my book is to try to assess how much harm did President Trump do to the United States and how can it be fixed in the future? Now, in terms of uh, him getting voted into the Oval Office in the first place, you say Trump walked through an unlocked door. Uh, what exactly yeah. do you mean by that? And wh where is the flaw in the system? Is it the Electoral College? Is, uh, uh, is it the, the two-party system? Wh what needs to get fixed? Well, the, the flaw that he, he, as everyone knows, won the presidency even though he got almost three million votes fewer than Hillary Clinton. The American political system allows a candidate to win the presidency by winning more of the states rather than more of the votes. Uh, but that is not the core of the disaster. The core of the disaster is there are all kinds of screens that are supposed to be there to protect people from someone who wants to use the president for presidency for corrupt purposes. Uh, Americans thought it was not allowed to run a business while you were president. They thought it was not allowed to collect flows of money from foreign corporations and foreign governments. They thought the president was supposed to make disclosures of his financial doings. Uh, they thought the president wasn't allowed to appoint his relatives to crucial jobs. But in every area, those safeguards turned out to be much weaker than Americans thought. And when you had a president who was determined to violate them, they could be violated. Now, you say it's not enough to defeat Donald Trump on Election Day and that even if he does leave the office peacefully, the trauma that he's inflicted yeah. is going to distort politics for years to come. And one of the things the book zeroes in on is how America recovers its global leadership. Talk to me about what yes. that could look like. This is probably the single biggest challenge and the most important thing facing the United States and the world. You know, I, I invite people who watch this program to think, how much confidence do you have in the leadership of the United States to do the right thing in this dangerous world? And if the Americans don't do it, how is that job going to get done? Um, the, the, we've always looked on the Western Alliance as a coalition of nations, but the United States has been the most important partner. They've paid the most, they've gotten the most. And so when they speak, everybody else sort of adjusts and maybe you argue back and forth, but you can have a proper common project in which the United States and Canada and Great Britain and Germany and Australia and Japan and like-minded, market-minded democracies can work together. In this global pandemic, we've had no such kind of global response. Every country has been on its own. Borders have gone up. Medical equipment has been embargoed. There's now talk of having every country make its own vaccine. That's craziness. Uh, we should all be working together, but we don't because the Americans aren't leading. Well, the book is called Trumpocalypse. Uh, Mr. Frum, thank you very much for joining us again. We appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.